Just launch a foul to blinding snow. Of state is flat. Um, kind of cool. <laughs> Tired of the weather. And you're not gonna, and people are not going to like what I no, have to say no. either. And that is, uh, we have now learned that Sienna did not make the NIC tournament. Would not make it. We'll talk with head coach uh, Paul Hewitt uh, coming up live on Big Board. Also, Knicks and Bulls in the NBA. We'll preview Tuesday's Class A High School Championship. It's time to fill out those brackets. We'll run down all the 64 teams in the NCAA field next on the 30-minute edition of Big Board Sports. I'm very, very disappointed for our players, um, but at the same time, I've got to understand that, you know, the committee had a hard job to do, and, you know, they did the best of their ability. We'll be around for a while to get this thing done next year or the previous year, but, uh, you know, we thought we had a shot. We knew it wasn't a great shot, but anytime you, you don't get in somewhere, you're a little disappointed. Ryder does get in from the MAC conference. Well, everyone expected the St. Rose women to have... They've made lumberjacking less than MAC. Selection Sunday, let the madness begin. We'll run down who's going where. Meantime, the Sienna Saints wait for their phone to ring. We'll talk live with Sienna coach Paul Hewitt. St. Rose hopes to be among Division II's elite, and his airness comes to the garden for what could be his last time. Big Board Sports, right now. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger Wyden, and welcome to Big Board Sports Selection Sunday. Yes and the NCAA on the road to the Final Four. The 64-team field uh, has been announced. We'll get to all of that coming up in the program. But first, the uh, most sought-after local sports answer of the day, the question being, did Sienna get an NIT bid? As we told you earlier, no, they did not. Word came down late. Paul Hewitt and staff and members of the media were all staked out tonight at the Ark on the campus of Sienna College in Loudonville, waiting and waiting and waiting. There's John Dargenia, the SID. And... Finally, about 10:15, word came down that a 17 and 12 record, a spot in the MAC finals, would not be quite enough. Instead, the committee chose 18 and 9 rider to represent the MAC. You know, I thought our guys gave us a tremendous effort this year. Uh, myself and the rest of the coaching staff couldn't be happy with how they they performed for us. And you know, the fall just short. Yeah, very disappointing, especially for our senior Jimmy Sakatarski. Now we'll talk to the coach coming up live in just a few minutes. But the other big story, the NCAA Division II championships are already underway. St. Rose men are going to the Elite Eight in Louisville. Hey, Brian Bury's team won their 26th of the year tonight against Stonehill in the Northeast Regional Final. This game was tied at 72. Time running out in regulation. St. Rose got three cracks at it. None of them would fall. They go to overtime. We take you to the first overtime. Damon Reed... On the inside here with the finish, two of us by four. Stonehill was up three with 10 seconds left. Jermaine Henderson hits the three to tie it, and we go to a second overtime. Henderson had six of his game by 33 in the second OT and was the tournament MVP. St. Rose won the elite after beating Stonehill 97 87 in double overtime. At halftime, all year long, every time it's broke, we found a way to fix it. And with a minute 32 seconds left, Jermaine was struggling, and I told him, you know, Jermaine, you got a minute 32 left in your career. Let's go fix it. And he did. I can't put it into words. It's great. I'm glad we won my senior year. I've been through a lot in the past uh, 12 months. Um, this is just a great culmination to uh, end the year, but it's not over yet. Hopefully, we can go down and lose and win some games. Now, hopefully, they can. They got some time off. They did not play now until the 18th of March. It's a Wednesday. 3 p.m. in the afternoon, St. Rose against uh, Fairmont State. Now, before we get to all the seeds in the tournament, the 64-team field, this was Championship Sunday and all the major conferences. Let's start out in the ACC title game, Duke and North Carolina. Duke on a first-half run behind 12 points from 6'6 sophomore Chris Carrowell, and Duke was up 33-28. But in the final three minutes of the half, Carolina on a 12-0 run. Junior Antoine Jameson with 10 points. UNC up by four at the break. Second half, 
more Carolina, more Jamison. He finished with 20 points and now 18 rebounds. And number four, North Carolina, knocking off number one Duke, big time, 83-68. So here's the stage now in the East, folks. These games will be Thursday in Hartford. Carolina, you see the number one seed. Princeton got a five seed. The Chicago Bulls. And to make matters worse, Jordan pulled out his original Air Jordan. The sneakers he wore as a rookie. Size 12 and a half as opposed to 13 and a half. And the Knicks got out to a good start. Allen Houston had 24 points. Larry Johnson scores over Scotty Pippen. And the Knicks had a three-point lead at the break. But the Bulls with a 10-0 run in the third quarter. And then in the fourth, Jordan in the lane and one bulls up nine with 602 remaining and then if it was his trip to new york he proved to the fans why he is the best 42 points shots like that and of course he left to a standing ovation the bulls handle the next 102 to 89. the moves and, and, and how it's, i mean you know how excited the fans are i, I think the moves and odds tell you that but you know at some point in time you have to realize it's not going to it's not gonna, you know, you're not gonna be able to do that. And uh, I, just, I guess it didn't really give me a thought in terms of what's gonna happen in the season. I try not to think about it, and it's, I basically block it out. But I'm still glad that I can entertain the people. With All right, and a sad note in sports. Speaking of a guy who entertained people, NFL Hall of Famer Ray Nitschke has passed away of uh, an apparent heart attack. He was one of the great players in the game great Packer he was part of Vince Lombardi's teams in the 60s played for Green Bay from 1958 to 1972 Ray Nitschke was 60 years old still to come on big board sports the rest of the day in the NBA more college basketball putting a live interview with the head coach Paul Hewitt will wrap up the season and look to next year coming up next on big board sports I tell you it has been a better than advertised uh, kind of year Sienna 17 and 12, uh, third in the MAC, uh, beating teams like Davidson, Northwest, beat Iona, all teams going to the NCAAs. And, uh, and then throw in, uh, you know, a number of one point losses at the record and certainly could have even been better. But 17 and 12, boy, is such an improvement from a year ago. And uh, Paul Hewitt joins us on the program tonight to uh, talk about the NIT a little bit and then wrap up the season. Coach, good to see you. Thanks, uh, I know you were out of town, got back in, hoping for the bid. What? How close was it? What did it come down to? You know, obviously, I think it, it was close, um, but the number of wins is probably the, the bottom line. Ryder had 18 wins. We had 17 wins. So if I had to point at one thing, obviously, that would ha probably have to be it. A few of those one-point Yeah. A few yeah. of those one-point <laughs> games, right? You know, you always tell your players that you don't know which possession is going to mean the game. And uh, in this case, you don't know which possession would mean the season. Uh, as I said, I, I think the, the number of wins was the, was the deciding factor. And, you know, we had four one-point games and a couple other close ones, so you never know. And you also look at the, the way some of these conference tournaments unfolded. You right. know, it didn't exactly break your way either. Exactly. I, I think with, with Florida winning a game in the SEC tournament and Minnesota winning two games in the SEC tournament, those are two spots right there. Had those teams gone out in the first round, would have opened up a couple more. Yeah. And certainly Georgetown winning a, a couple of ball games. And as Dayton was hoping to get an NCAA yeah. and they went to the NIT, but boy, Florida's 14-14. Yeah, but they're a good club. Yeah. You know, they won oh, at yeah. Kentucky. Uh, you know, they, they play in a very, very tough conference, obviously the SEC, so I think they're deserving. Even the NIT field, I'm looking at it right now. It's Marquette, Penn State, Seton Hall, Georgia, Georgia Tech. <laughs> There's some good teams. Yeah, it, it's a very challenging field. I'm sure the, the committee, the NIT committee, is very, very happy to have those type of ball clubs coming in there this year. And, you know, even though, and I, I, I still think, too, that it would have been, I was, the fans are rooting for Sienna Marquette. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <We're all right. laughs> it would have been a, it was a, it had to have been talked about i'm sure it was i was down at the uh the big east tournament on thursday and that was a talk around the garden everybody said they were going to send marquette up here right. it was a great game for the area but you know again you yeah. know I, i'm happy we were considered very very disappointed we didn't get in but you know yeah. we'll hopefully we'll learn our lesson in this summer we'll put it to good use wrap up the season for me what uh, you know it's uh, you're 17 and 12 a lot better than a lot of people expected i don't i think yeah. you felt you could yeah. do this uh, but you must have been pleased overall with the way it ended up couldn't be happy with, with the effort our guys gave us um you know just just a hard play night in night out i would say of the, of the games we played of the 29 ball games i guess we're playing i would say 27 times i felt we gave the best effort we could give there were a couple of games i thought we were for, for different reasons 
didn't come out and, and play at the same intensity, but these guys gave us everything they had. And, and I could tell from preseason conditioning and, and the individual instruction drills we did early in the year that this was going to be a good group. And I told everybody that, listen, I thought we were going to win some ball games this year. My goal in the regular season was 17, and uh, we came up with 15 regular season and 7 overall. So happy for these guys to, to taste winning again, and hopefully we'll learn from uh, – from this year and put it to good use this summer. Yeah, so next year, uh, let's see, 20 wins and, uh, <laughs> and no problem winning the MAC finals. We'll be in the big dance. Where are we going, uh, Coach? You know, I tell people, and I told the kids this, especially the latter part of the season, you know, you put yourself in a position where you can do something special this year and uh, you don't take it for granted. You don't ever take these type of situations for granted because next season there's no promise. There's no promise that the guys are going to come back in the same type of shape they were in. They're going to work as hard on their game as they did last summer. Um, injuries, you got to stay with some injuries. There are a lot of factors that are going to having a very good season, and uh, you know you don't take those factors for granted. But what you have to do is to work as hard as you can to prevent injury, uh, prevent you know your decay of your skills, nice. and hopefully come back a little better. You got a lot of kids back. Obviously, this was still a pretty young Sienna team. Yeah. What about the kids you have coming in? Without the obviously can't go into details about yeah. that, but do you expect some of those kids to come in? class you're bringing in? Yeah, I, I think all three young men that were coming in have an opportunity to come in and contribute. They have a smooth adjustment. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, everyone mm -hmm. now knows your system, and all, everybody coming back. I mean, it should be yeah. an easier transition there for you. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, the, the fact that we've got a year in and that these guys know the As the season wore on, we were getting harder and harder trying to find games. We've had a couple people cancel on yep. us already. That um, happens when you play. That <laughs> exactly. happens. Nobody wants to get out there and play you guys. Exactly. You know? We've got George Washington on the schedule. We've got uh, St. Bonaventure coming down to the Pepsi. Yeah. Both those teams coming to the Pepsi. We're going on the road to Hartford. And we'll more than likely we'll be going on the road to a uh, tournament on the West Coast. Yeah. Should be fine. Uh, relax a little bit if you can. Yeah, it's, right now it's recruiting. prime recruiting time. You know, we've got to take advantage of a lot of games going on in the state tournament. Obviously, there's some local kids that we want to take a look at and as well as some kids outside of the area. Hey, you did a great job, Paul. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate you coming in tonight. Okay. Paul, you at the head coach at uh, Siena College with a terrific season uh, in the books. Now, uh, a little surprise here. The St. Rose women's basketball team, 33-0, and had a chance to advance to the Division II Elite Eight and got beat last night. Kurt Bailey and the uh, Golden Knights needed to beat Bentley at Siena College to continue the season. Krista Candere, number 44 here, had 16 boards, 11 points. Candere had a chance to tie this game with four seconds left. Best foul shooter on the team missed the second foul shot. The uh, St. Rose Dream season is over. They fall to Bentley 50 to 49. The Lady Knights finish up 33 and 1. All in tossed salads and scrambled eggs. Mercy. And maybe I seem a bit confused. Well, maybe.